Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I'm going to be tackling the Hot Wheels Hollowback, which is part of the Acceleracers um, series, if you guys were into that at all. Um, I wasn't, so I was just exposed to this, and uh, cars like the, the Slingshot. I was slightly surprised at this. When you take it apart, the base is metal, but the body is plastic, so... Let's see if we can actually paint a plastic body that had decals on it and make it look good. So yeah, this is my first time dealing with a plastic body and I kind of like the look of this. It has a muscle car feel to it. Uh, probably something, you know, if I had to guess would be a cross between a Pontiac and a Chrysler maybe 70 71 but it obviously isn't so first step i'm going to do is i'm going to put some some chrome wheels on it that would have been appropriate for around that time frame which is the technically slotted chrome mags instead of the aluminum so to get the decal off which it really it's the same surface level so i didn't really have to do this i guess i'm using a wire a really soft wire brush attachment or Brillo pad or whatever you want to call it on my Dremel tool and it I had to go really fast and really light otherwise it was going to dig in or begin to melt the plastic so I abandoned that fairly quickly and opted to go with the sanding sponges and I went with a variety from 400 up to um, I think it was 800 or 900 1200 you know I just I went all the way up till it felt really smooth and then I'm just gonna use a knife to get the cracks and door jams and stuff like that just so I don't lose any anything in the painting process and gets filled in the window on this was really bad so same process I'm wet sanding the actual window I did it with 800 and then 1200 and then dipped it in the gauzy let it sit then I primed everything. I primed the body and the underneath was gray primer, then black on the other parts, the interior. And that's because it's going to be a two-step process. I went with a red, a very deep red from the Tropical Glitz line. Then I'm using the spastic paint process for the chrome. And that's a two-step process where you painted a gloss black, which they supply, and then the chrome. And I didn't want it to be super, super chromey, like the bright, tacky plastic chrome that it looked like when we got it. So this, I just put it on. I, I missed it at real light till it looked what I wanted. And then after that, it's just detail painting. And what the whole point of this project was to... I'm not a big fan of fantasy cars, and, I'm, and I'll put this and lump it into the fantasy car area. And I ob obviously have never done a plastic bodied car, but I wanted to, to kind of try something different and prove that you can still make these types of cars look good. And it really didn't take any more or less work than the metal bodies. Yes, the metal bodies are nice to work with, plastic you have to be careful but I did the same process just with different tools in so far as getting rid of the paint I just sanded it instead of dumped it in citrus strip and as long as you're careful not to scratch it then really it's not that bad because nothing uh, I would say with the plastic if you scratch it it's going to you really can't fix it as easily as you could with the die cast so then really at this point Everything is just detail painting. I didn't add anything. I didn't subtract anything to this aside from the rims and tires. So I'm using stuff that was already there and it had a lot of great detail. And all I'm trying to do is make that detail pop and present it in a different way, which in a lot of times, you know, people, myself included, overdo projects. Uh, I'm working on one right now that's uh, it's so in-depth and complicated that it, it it's past the point of being fun. So this these types of projects are nice because 
it just kind of gives you a, a little bit of a reset. You're just, you're not trying to make stuff fit. Everything fits. You're just trying to paint. And I would also go so far as to say these types of projects, if you're just going to focus on detail painting and trying to make these look as good as possible, you do spend a lot more time on the details. And that helps you tremendously on future projects because now you're going to pay attention to those little details. And even if they don't show up when the car is completely assembled, A, it's good practice, and B, details do matter in the grand scope. It's very hard to see the interior on this, but I really detailed the seats. And you can see them through the dark, the dark glass when the thing's together, and I think it adds to it, in my, in my opinion. So trying to, you know, just get yourself to take your time and do these types of, you know, picking out every little detail that's molded in to an original casting, it, it's good practice. And I, and I think it's something that I, you know, I, everybody should do more often. So really, after everything's together, I'm going to clear coat it all. You can kind of see the interior tub and, and how well it's detailed. And the base, you'll notice the front and the back, I have the middle masked off on the base because the way that the car is actually made. So here it is, all ready to go together. And that was about it. This is a real quick project. And this is what we started with. Definitely not something I would have given a second look a year ago. And this is what I ended up with. I, I like it. I think it came out really good. This, you know, I started with something that was used. It definitely wasn't a brand new casting, that's for sure. But I enjoyed it. I had fun. It was not a really long project for me. And it was nice to not have to, you know, be hacking, hacking things up for a change. And as much as I enjoy doing that, sometimes it's nice to just reset and have fun and, and enjoy it and do something quick and simple. And that's what this whole project was. And it was unique. It was something different. I, don't, I haven't seen anybody redo one on, on YouTube. I, I've seen one or two, but it's not one of those cars that everybody's running out to do. So other than that, uh, I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned. I got some really, really cool projects coming up that um, I think you guys are going to like. So one of them is kind of a Ghostbusters project. I'm working on a, a Fiero of all things. So the, the channel is going to be moving in, in, in some, some strange directions as time goes on, including robots, dioramas, uh, you name it. And I'm looking forward to the creative outlet and being able to share the experience with you guys. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.